in this edition of A Conversation with Jeannie Sweetness, we will be speaking with Beware of Revolution Sound, bless the bless East it. Coast Warriors. Good evening, Beware. How are you? I'm blessing myself. I'm doing great. Glad to be here sitting with you. <laughs> right here. And we're in Detroit. We're not in New York today. We're not in uh, D.C. We're in Detroit. Just let you know that I move around. Frequent flyer. <laughs> hey, Beware, what you doing here in Detroit? <laughs> you know, the war angels just have to come bless up the place, you know, bring some blessings and some revolution vibes. So we do it anywhere we go. Well, I am honored that you're here and that I'm able to do this here in person with you, revolution style. Mm -hmm. So when you say the East Coast Warriors, yeah, where does that come from? Well, originally we're from Brooklyn. So, you know, we have to honor where we come from. We can't just forget that because that Brooklyn is what molded us, is what shaped us, what shaped what, what created our mindset of being revolutionists. Right. It's growing up in Brooklyn straight. Right. But now that we move, now we're, we're residing in D.C., you know, we can't disrespect the youth and that support us in D.C. So we have to support them. We have to represent them like they support us as well. So right. East Coast Warriors is this accumulation of Everyone, all the fans, supporters in our family right. along the East Coast. You know, not not just from Brooklyn to D.C., but from Brooklyn to Florida, because our family runs North, South Carolina, right. Right. Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, the Florida, East straight, Coast. straight down, <laughs> exactly. So which part of the East Coast do you originate from? I'm originally from Brooklyn. I'm a bed star baby, born and raised. Jackie Robinson Projects, Boys and Girls High School, PS21. Chauncey with T. Malcolm X and Stuyvesant, you know, that's my, that's my neighborhood. That's where I'm from. That's where I raised me. So is that what brought you into the sound system business is being around everyone in Brooklyn? You know, Brooklyn is a very, it's, it's, it's the cultural mecca of New York City. So when you're dealing with culture coming from indigenous or ethnic people, African, Caribbean, um, Latino, Brooklyn is, is the capital for that. So growing up in Brooklyn, you, you were nurtured in a very cultural environment. And being that my father is Jamaican, he was really into the dance hall and the, the DJing and, you know, and as little kids, you know, we shorties, you know, we we, we, we go into the dances, which were kept in the East, which right. is a private school on Summer Avenue. So during the week as a school, on the weekend, we serve as a dance hall, a venue for special events is how we raise funds for the private schooling. So being and growing up in that environment, it, it was just like, it, it was a natural thing for me as I got older. For me and my brothers, just to make that transition into being selectors, MCs, promoters, event planners, anything that has to do with that entertainment realm. Right. So, so, do you stick to out of the promotions and MCing and everything else? Do you stick to mainly what part? Are you more promoting? Are you more juggling? Do you more clash? What part <laughs> would, would you say you more stick to? You know, I'm a selector. That's my passion. And as a selector, if it's a juggling, let's juggle. If it's a killing, you know, revolution is always with it. Right. If it's a bar mitzvah, baby shower, <laughs> wedding reception, you know, dogs, anniversary that you got them from the pet store, all of that. We can do everything. That's what selecting means. It means that what people are gathering to commune and to connect right. and with this community, a selector is a guy that's able to select the type of music that consecrates or, 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 or actually puts the icing on the cake of that gathering. Right. So, you know, it, you know, it's not about the selector, but you're still a major integral part of what's going on. Right. So as so I wouldn't say we clash, you know, we juggle, we just select this, but our our hobby and our passion is killing sound. I just love exposing guys. I love exposing their weaknesses. Right. I love exposing their lack of mental cap capability. I just love it. <laughs> you know, because your nickname is the War Angel, so you try to say you do all this juggling and bar mitzvahs and mazel <laughs> and all that, but your nickname is the War Angel. So, so talk about the clashes. Well, as you know, beware, beware is, is, is that's my attributes. Beware means to be aware, to be conscious, to be to be alert. But when I'm when I'm in a in a dance hall and I'm killing sound. You know, I have to make sure that I'm making that transition, that I'm in a straight war state of mind. 
So that's why I get war angel for me, because I'm in a war state of mind. My spirit is in war. My mind is on war. Not actually war, you know, like in the battlefield when you're killing people over in Iraq. But that same mentality is what I bring to the dance hall. So war angel is my alter ego when I'm in the clash. You know what I'm saying? So war, beware handle his business, but war angel take it to a completely different level. And I, and I have seen you in action. I read that you have a clash coming up in December yes. on the East Coast, Capital Belt Clash. Yes. Tell us what's going on with yes. that and who are your contenders? Well, the contenders are Earth Ruler from Brooklyn. So he's like my sound brother because we're coming out of the same community. We grew up around the same time. You know, he's a little older than me, but that's cool. Um, so he's my sound brother in my squad. Enough respect for, for, for Striker and Froggy. I've known them for years from Pieces Sound. So it's, it's definitely going to be a good event. Um, Amplex, Glamour G, good selector, veteran selector. Um, but, you know, we, we, we name revolution. We live revolution. We think revolution. We eat revolution. That's our lifestyle. It's not just what we do in the dance hall on Saturday and Friday nights. It's when Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's everything that my, that's my life is encompassed with. It's about furthering my knowledge so that I can be better in every area of my life. That means including being a selector. That's, that's right. And I know that you um, wear white most of the time. <laughs> Why, Angel? <laughs> I, just wanna, I, just, I just wanna put that out there. I mean, you have the name. I see you have the outfits. I just wanna, you know, put that out there so they understand my, this is you. That's my war suit. As you know, when I'm going to war, you know, it would seem a little contradictory that you wear white going to war because it's so bright and you can see it, but it's not the white, it's the light. And it's the light of God that they seeing on me. So when I go to war, you know, I'm taking God with me. God is sent to me to do it. This is why, this is where angel come from. So I'm not just going to war because I have a personal vendetta against somebody because I don't like them or I have nothing else to do with my time. Right. It's because God said, beware. I want to go down there and expose some pagan. I said, all right, God, I got it. Boom. War angel. Some boy get exposed. That's right. So you you know what? Uh, the sound system business, where it was when you first started, and where it is now, it's horrible. Oh, yeah, man. It's oh, absolutely yeah. horrible. And because you are a revolution, what, what do you think we need to do to, I, I don't know, to bring it back to where it needs to be or to change it? What do we need to do to save it? Well, I think that we need to, you know, we always think about going back because those were the good old days. But we really want to move forward. We don't want to go in reverse. And, and going forward, we, we really, there's some things like, any other culture, there are rituals and traditions that make that culture what it is. Mm -hmm. So in this dance hall culture, there are rituals and there are traditions mm -hmm. that make it what it is. And what I find out is that a lot of the new selectors and new promoters that are coming into the industry, they don't have those rituals and those traditions that make the business what it is. So they're, they're moving things in and they're, you know, they're... Uh, adjusting and being you know, flexible, which is a good thing. But when you are leaving out the seeds or the roots of the tradition that make this thing what it is, right. you create another thing. Right. That's not what you right. like. That's not that right. so. So this new thing that's being created, I don't really care for it anymore. You know, I love my music. I love being a selector. I love killing someone. I love juggling. Bob Mistress too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with these new guys, there's no respect. There's no honor, there's no dignity, there's no integrity. It's like the business is a whore, and these new selectors and these new promoters are pimps. And they're trying to get everything they can get out of her as, as long, you know, whenever they can get it, by any means necessary. And, you know, and, and what I mean by that is when you take the business, there's no, there's no input in the business. In Washington, D.C., where we are now, D.C. was... Had to be when I first when when, when Revolution first came to DC. DC was the second or third largest market in the U.S. Right. after New York and Miami. Mm -hmm. So what happened was a lot of artists coming out of Jamaica, or New York, and sounds they had to come to DC. DC so you right. were getting the biggest dances, the biggest stage shows. I mean, you were getting some proper thing, and there was an order. People were if you had your dance on a night, I'm not going to come and put my dance on your night. Right. Traditions. 
customs, rituals. Right. You understand? Right. That's what that's what made the thing flow. But you know, you got these little young guys and little young girls, and they coming into the business now, 18, 19 years old, and it's like, man, f that. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. You know, because she can put on her clothes and a half naked in the dance, so he can scream on the microphone and download and play the songs he downloaded from right, the internet. Right. So she's a dancer, and he's a selector now. Right. But they didn't put no work in. There's no foundation. And the work is not just so much of proving that you can do it, but it's about learning the culture and the tradition of what you are a part of. So do we accept that? Do we accept it, or do we take them under our wings and mentor them and show them the right way so that they can do it correctly? Mm-hmm. I agree, you know, as we mature and we move further along, you want to be able to teach those what you've learned. Right. You know, just like, I mean, I have to give credit to Lionface. I have to give credit to, to Super C. I have to give credit to Fergo Digital. I have to give credit to Stereo Fish, Majestic Sound. These are the guys, when I'm growing up in Brooklyn, who put me under the lion paw. Say, yo, come here, be real. Come here. Right. Carry these records in the dance. Come here, be real. Yo, just... Watch, wrap up them speak a while when the dance is over. Come here, B-Way. Right. Stay here and guard the truck while we... You understand? Right. And those things help you foster this appreciation for this thing that we have. Right. But when the young guys them know, they don't have that appreciation. So our job is to pass on to them what was passed on to us. Right. But then it's a conflict. Because the conflict is, there's that lack of respect. You see, because when I was growing up, we respected those guys. Right. You know, for what they did, who they were, and what they were, what they meant to us, and what they were teaching us. Right. So now there's no respect. I'm in the dance, you know, and I'm not an old slut. I've probably been playing a little over ten years. And one of the little young guys came to me like, "Yo, you got five minutes left." I'm like, "This dude who's been playing right. in the dance for three or four okay. months, right. who don't put no work in, ain't been nowhere, have no selected resume, but he's telling me who right. have those things and put the work." Who put time, the work in? Up. Time is up. Right. He's going to go to the promoter and say, "Hey, look, I mean, song before I play." And then the promoter come to me and say, "Hey, right. anyway, I mean, more you got." Right. Like, you know, there's a there's an order, there's a protocol right. that needs to be adhered to. Well, well, not only that, but in but in previous times, when you see that the sound before you is in a vibe, you also don't take him out that's, of that vibe. When right. you see that the fans are really you know, they're feeling him. You also don't come in and take that. Much you know, dance. Because it would ruin things. Yes. You know, and so you, you definitely don't don't um, want to do that. But I appreciate the things that you're saying. And I am hoping that not just the fans, but those who want to be a selector, that they are watching and they listen and that they take it to heart and implement it in whatever it is that they're doing on whatever part that they have right. in this industry because it is needed. You know, so I definitely appreciate that you're taking the time to say that, you know, for us. Um, you know, another thing, I want to mm-hmm. make this point. Because for me, everything that I do, God is right there in the center of it. That's right. You can't prosper if God is not a part of what you're doing. Right. There's no way in the world. So as you move forward and, and as you really look at the industry, there's no God in the business. Yeah. It's naked women, it's skin out, boom, boom, this, the breast real that, right. gun man this, right. money that, kill this, sex that, all of that foolishness. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it has to get balanced. Because if you if, if the seesaw is not balanced, right. one side will be heavy in the other and it's gonna it's gonna topple over. It's unbalanced. So and that's why the business looks the way it does, because it's unbalanced. Right. You cannot prosper in nothing that you're doing. Unless God is a part of that. So look at the dance hall now. You don't see no Rasta Manchu. You hear no godless. Mm-hmm. You don't they don't they don't respect our women. The, the, the men don't respect each other. Mm-hmm. The men don't respect the women. They don't respect the business. I mean I can go on and on and on and more because we're so dense desensitized and most people in the industry aren't conscious. Right. So this thing just flies over their head. They're not even aware of this. So a guy like me now, I'm weird. A guy like me now, I'm funny, I'm crazy. Oh, he's in white, oh, voodoo guy, Obia guy, whatever oh, they say about not me. Not at all. I get all of that. Not at all. It's because they don't understand that what God looks like when it's in their face. And this is what it looks like. It looks like B-Way. Right. It looks like the War Angel. It looks like Revolution. But they don't understand that because they used to some white guy coming out, you know, coming out of, out of the clouds to come curse them or bless them. It don't work like that. 
Well, well, no. Um, I definitely carry my light around with me, oh, and and I absolutely put God first in everything. We actually did uh, reggaepromotions.com. We actually interviewed two of the Morgans. We did Peter Morgan and Gramps Morgan, my and they family. spoke on that. Absolutely. My family. That's why I brought them up. I know that you all are, <laughs> grew up together and everything, but the Morgans also speak about making sure that God is first. But they are the Morgan family. They keep God in their music. You know, and you see more uh, as far as their spiritual. And they, they speak on conscious things. That's one of the things that Peter really focuses on. Yes. Um, so there are a lot of the artists, the uh, cultural artists, because you have Ginger, who's a cultural yes. artist. You definitely have Fiakin, yes. Pressure Bus Pipe, and they speak very consciously and very positively. You know, and I know that these are, are guys that you that you play um did release. And I know them all personally. And, and you know them one-on-one, -on -one, but you, you definitely see that with who you hang around, you know, where everybody's mindset is. And I know that Revolution released a 100% Sizzla Duff Flake mix. <laughs> Consciousness. Yes. So it's, it is one to let you know that we do appreciate you bringing that light and bringing that consciousness to us. And it's not in vain because it is, it is changing. So um, when you're not selecting, juggling, clashing, when you're when you're not teaching or studying, what do you do? Do you have a downtime? You know, my life is revolution. You know, revolution means a change. And the first change that has to take place is within yourself. I mean, if you would have known me 10, 10, 15 years ago when I was a shorty coming up, you know, our conversation would be very different than it is today because I was in a different place in my mind in my life at that time. So what I do constantly, what's forefront for me, what's priority for me, what's every day, all day, anytime, every time for me, is getting knowledge. Getting knowledge, educating myself, programming myself, so that everything that I'm involved with in my life, I can be a better vet. I can be what the selector, father, a partner, a promoter, a, whatever, whatever that is, because as a man, I understand that I'm a producer. I'm a direct reflection of God. That's right. I'm a direct reflection of God. So being a direct reflection of God, I got to know what that means. So in order for me to know what that means, that means I got to get knowledge. And the thing about the business is that it allows me to take my exposure, what I know, and, ch and, and, and format it in a way that people can hear it, and party and dance to it at the same time. And, and I, that's why I really I really love and enjoy being a selector. But getting knowledge is key for me because the only way that I'm going to be what God designed me to be is if I get knowledge and understand who I am from every aspect. And this is why I feel like most selectors can't do nothing with me mm -hmm. because they're thinking on a human level. Right. And I'm thinking on a whole completely different level. Right. And I'm, I'm existing on a different level, not just thinking on a different level. So that's that, that's my mission, getting knowledge, being a teacher, being a trainer, equals revolutions, period. Well, thank you. You have really opened our eyes. Is there anything you would like to say <laughs> to your fans? Boop, bless up, yo, big up, bless up, all my family in bed style, Ch Chauncey, Bainbridge, Decatur, J JR Projects, Brevoy, Marcy, Smurf Village, Straight down Kingston Avenue, straight down to Lafayette Gardens. Y'all want to big up the entire Brooklyn family. Big up Morgan Heritage and my family for life. Bless up Peter Grant's Una Morgan father. The whole cool lives and the whole works. Big up my family revolution. Big up Super. Big up Diamond. Big up Danny. Big up Danger Rock. Anyway, you stand up, bless up. And I want to say one more thing to you, Glamour G. I'm going to expose your nastiness December 2nd. You can have nothing for revolution. You can't talk to the war angel because you're a heathen. I mean, I got exposure. You got antichrist. War angel. <laughs> Just want to thank you again for taking the time out during your busy schedule to sit down with us. Beware, I want to let you know that this interview will be on reggaepromotions.com and also geniesweetness.com. Mm -hmm. We'll be blasting it out. To all of the social media outlets. That's what's up. Well, I really appreciate You know, you have been doing an excellent job mm -hmm. in the industry. And one of the best kept secrets in the industry is the, is the energy that the women bring. 
because we don't understand that we can't do this by ourselves. We need our partners with us, and the women are our partners, and you and, and Bonita, the work that you guys do and, and how you guys have really pushed not just the it, sound clash, but just sounds and promoters and events, and I'm truly grateful for what you guys do. Thank you very much. Thank you.